welcome to Digging Deeper, where we help you lock eyes with Jesus and take a step towards Him. Today is Wednesday of Holy Week, which is a journey of Jesus from Jerusalem's gate to Golgotha's cross and eventually to Easter's triumph. Our scripture today is from Luke 22, verses 1 through 6. And it says, Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number, a number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began seeking a good opportunity to betray him to them apart from the crowd. This is an interesting kind of picture we get of Jesus's week. And we see in verse three that Jesus is betrayed by one of his friends. Now, this may seem not like a huge deal, but I want us to really highlight it. It says that he's one of the 12. This is one of the 12 people who's been walking with Jesus for the past three years. And it's not like Judas just happened to, oh, it's not, you know, just kind of betraying Jesus a little bit on the side. It's like, no, no, no. He is exploiting his friendship with Jesus in order for money. And even to the extent in order that Jesus would be killed. Now, it's sometimes easy for us to kind of push God, Jesus off into this, you know, high and mighty God care or category. But it's important for us to see that Jesus himself is betrayed by one of his friends and the emotional pain that would go along with this. So Mallory, what does this experience teach you about the person of Jesus? I mean, this makes him so relatable to me because how many of us have experienced a betrayal of some sort? I mean, that's just part of our human experience. And we see Jesus went through this. And to me, it makes him like more like a man, you know, it's like he, he really knows the sorrows and struggles that we've gone through yeah. on earth. Yeah, that's so, so good. So yeah. on this uh, holy day um, of throughout this holy week, may you just consider today that you have a savior who is not just sufficient for you in eternity, but he is sufficient for you in your humanity, that no matter what you have walked through, he has walked through it as well. Yeah. So on that, let's enter into a time of prayer as we wrap up today. We want to specifically pray over our kids' journey to the cross. So this is a fun experience that we've designed for our kids here to happen on Good Friday, and we want to pray over it. So go ahead and get comfortable, close your eyes where you are, and I'll lead us through a little time of prayer. So many kids and their families are going to stop at stations outside as they walk along our our creek trail up to the crosses. And so let's pray that even now God would prepare their hearts for the things that they're going to see, touch, and experience on this walk. Pray that God would give them open hearts to hear the truth and really learn about what Jesus did. And then pray that God would draw them to himself and reveal to each of them their need for Jesus as their Savior. So Jesus, thank you for this Good Friday Kids experience that we have. We pray, God, that you would use this in powerful ways to bring so many of our kids into relationship with you, to where they believe in you, they put their faith and their trust in you. And I pray for many, it'd be for the first time. God, use it powerfully this Easter. And we love you, God, and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.